Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to class today. So we have a warm up on the board. So before we get started today, I want you to discuss these questions with the people around you. So here we have a computer. Computers hopefully compute. That's why we call them computers. But I want to know, what is it about this computer that computes? Certainly not all of the pieces of the computer will end up being important for computing. I could probably remove certain pieces of this computer and could still refer to it as a computer. What I want to know is what are kind of the, the core critical components of a computer that are the, co that are the uh, computing components of a computer. So what can't I remove and still refer to it as a computer? So uh, I want you with the people around you to discuss what pieces of a computer actually make it compute. Uh, is there one responsible component or are there many components that we need in order to say that the computer computes? And if there are many, I want to know which ones do you think are the most important? Or is there a singular piece that you think is absolutely the most important piece of a computer? So discuss that with the people around you um, to help. Here is an exploded view of a computer with a bunch of the different parts that are in it. So we need to come up with some definition for what does it mean to compute, what is a computer, in order to come up with a good theory of computing. A laptop is something that we all hopefully agree is a computer. So we all hopefully agree that laptops are uh, an example of a computer. So we want to make sure that any theory that we have that's going to describe what computation is or what a computer is uh, should apply to a laptop computer. So we definitely want that to be the case. However, we don't need everything for a laptop to be considered a computer. So for instance, I'm pretty sure every computer I've ever owned has been missing its rubber feet. And that didn't make it any less of a computer when that happened. Um, so certainly some things on this were, were critical components in order to, for us to be able to categorize this as a computer. Some of them are going to be uh, things that are maybe nice to have uh, for a computer. There are bells and whistles and gadgets and that sort of thing that, that we might like to have in some sort of product that you're trying to sell to people. There are other things in here that maybe are supporting what's doing the actual computing that are uh, kind of implementation details, we could say, about this computer, that we chose to manifest our computer in a particular way, and there were things as a consequence that we needed to include as components in our device in order to be able to uh, have that computer operate, but maybe aren't themselves doing computing, they're maybe supporting something that's doing computing. All of these things that aren't the core critical components of computers, if we're trying to develop a good theory, are distractions. We wanna kind of look at what is the essence of what we're studying and ignore everything else. So if we have a theory of computing that somehow includes rubber feet, then that's probably not a very good theory of computing. No theory of computing should, in, should mention rubber feet on the computer that you defined. So with that said, what things do you think are, are maybe important things for being able to call this a computer? What things do you think are, are important ones? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to consider these to be the three most important components. So basically the idea, the reason I think that these are the three most important components the CPU and, in particular, the transistors that are in that CPU, those are the ones that sort of do the work. That's what changes things. Whenever you're going to compute stuff, something needs to change. The transistors uh, arranged into a circuit on the CPU, those are the things that are actually doing the changing. Those are the ones doing the work. So I consider the CPU to be uh, one of the, if not the most important, um, devices or pieces of the, uh, of the computer in order to consider that a computer. If I had a computer and removed the CPU from it, then we would be hard pressed to still consider that to be computing anything. What does RAM do? Yes, yeah, so that stands for random access memory. What does it do? Yeah, so, so RAM is, uh, is storing some, we're going to say, uh, smallish number of things. So the RAM is, is memory that's going to store some small-ish number of things. What does the hard disk drive do? Or many modern computers instead have a solid disk drive, a solid state drive instead of a hard disk drive. 
Okay, so so the hard disk drive, uh, this stores data. Yeah, so it kind of stores data, and not only does it store data, it stores lots of it. So something that we're going to be doing, so, so the basic uh, trend that we're going to see throughout this semester, we're going to talk about several different models of computation. There is not a single model of computation that is the only one that's useful, the only one that people care about. There's actually several that are going to be useful in various different circumstances. And, and we can sort of, we're going to explore how, why each of these components are useful by explaining or by discussing models of computation that sort of have some of these but not others. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about a model of computation that is circuit based where we're going to be looking at what can circuits do? What can't circuits do? How efficiently can circuits do things? So that's what we're going to be starting with. So you can think of this as a model of computation where we only had the CPU, but didn't have RAM or the hard disk drive. After that, we're going to be looking at a model of computation where you can think of it as the CPU plus RAM. This is going to be a model of computation where uh, we have sort of limited memory. We have memory that, we, that we're allowed to use. We can store things, we can read things, we can write things, we can overwrite things, that, all of, and, and the like. So we're going to have some amount of memory to go along with our CPU, but it's going to be a small amount of memory, a very limited amount of memory. And then after that, we're going to look at a model of computation where we have access to an enormous amount of memory, more memory than we might ever want, is what we're going to say. For most things that you're going to be doing on your computer, if you have just a singular task that you're trying to do, usually your hard disk drive is going to be plenty big enough to store everything that you might want to store while, while doing that task. It might be that you're doing a large number of tasks and suddenly you run out. But for most singular tasks that you're going to try to do, uh, your hard disk drive is going to have plenty of space. So we're going to have three models of computation. One where we have no memory just circuits, one where we have limited memory, just like we had the CPU plus RAM, and one where we have bountiful memory, as much as we could ever hope for. 